All right, so in this video, I'm going to be covering arguments and cookies, and then I'll be moving on to dynamic routing, and I'll start the main project for this series, which is going to be essentially a website where people can send messages in sort of like a chat room with different channels like Discord or IRC. Anyways, uh, first off, I want to go over cookies and arguments. So at app.root cookie, def cookie. So I'm going to do both of them in one shot here by setting up a system where I can add cookies with the arguments and also demonstrate how to use multiple arguments and what that looks like and whatnot. So first off, I want to read the cookies, which if you don't know what a cookie is, it's just some data stored on the client's browser. It's in a key value pairs. There's also extra rules about like when it should expire and stuff like that. Uh, although I'm just going to stick with the flask default, you can look into the extra stuff there if you want to. Just know that cookies themselves are typically set up to expire after a certain amount of time, so they're not always on the browser. So yeah, uh, first I want to read the cookies. So if request.cookies.get my cookie, which is the name of my cookie, then my cookie dot cookie, uh, wait, then my cookie equals request.cookies.get my cookie else my cookie is just blank string because this function will return none if that cookie has not been set so if there's no value associated with the string my cookie so i just wanted to replace that with a blank string i also need to get the arguments so to get an argument you can do my text equals request .args.get t. And this is a very similar format to the cookies except if you know what requests are they're in the url for the page. So it's like question mark, the name of the argument equals, and then the value. And then if you want to do more, it's like and, and then name of the uh, key, and then value. Yeah. Although I want to put this behind an if it exists as well. So let's do that. If it exists, because it'll return if none, if it doesn't exist, else my text equals blank. And then I'm going to do the same thing for a new cookie argument. So I'm going to take that new cookie, new cookie, and I'll just call it new cookie down here as well. So we're getting the new cookie argument, the my cookie cookie, and the t argument. Oh, one thing I forgot to add is the uh, requests and make response. Well, uh, one of them is like a module, I think, and the other one's a function. We have to import those. Um, to get access to the arguments from here. And the make response is used to make a response that sets a cookie on the client's browser. Now we want to make our response. So response equals make response. And make response just takes a string. It takes other things as well, but for our uses, it's taking a string. So I'm going to give it my cookie. So the stored cookie, not the one we're giving it, that's a new one. I'm going to do a, a bar just to separate things, and then my my text. So you got two values there, one of them's the argument. And then if new cookie does not equal that, then response.setCookie, this is the part where we set our cookie if we've got an argument that tells us to make a cookie. So my cookie, and we'll give it a value, which is going to be new cookie, whatever was in that uh, variable. And then we just return the response. So now we can run the server. It's also worth noting I switched the port to uh, 3000 for testing. So python main.py, I made a typo up here. There's no S in, S in request. Python main.py, start our server. So on our server, we can go to our cookie page. And as you see, there's nothing here. Now I can use our arguments, so new cookie and T to do other things. So I'm going to do T first. So T equals hello there. So it added the hello there part because the server read the argument from here and added it in. So if you notice, it still goes to the cookie page even though you've got the arguments that say other things. Now we want to add a cookie argument and new cookie equals cookie things. So if you notice, we got the exact same page, but if you refresh it, this thing pops up. That's because on our first request, we read the cookie and set the cookie but we set the cookie after we read it and technically it doesn't get set till the message gets back to the client because the cookie is stored on the client. 
So in that first request, it sets it and the server doesn't know that it exists yet. So it's the second one where it reads the client's cookies once the uh, request goes through and it knows that it's there and it can add it into the response. So I can actually take out this argument and I still get the same thing, even though this is the same thing I sent before and it just said hello there. So this is a way you can store data specific to a user, like say their theme preferences. If you've got like a light theme and a dark theme, they can choose which theme they want and then they can come back later and it'll still be set to their preference by a just cookies. So if I want, I can change the cookie again. So new cookie equals A and then fresh again because you've got to get it set and there we go. And then I can just go to this page blank and it's still got the A because of the cookie. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you for cookies and arguments. I'll probably use them later on in this series, but I just wanted to show them right now so I don't have to go through too much explanation when I do use them. So I can just take, we'll get rid of this code now to show you that. Um, and the thing I wanted to go over now so that we can start working on the project for this series is dynamic routing. So I'm going to do app.root channel, channel ID, def, channel, channel, ID, pass. Okay, so if it's not obvious what I'm doing here, this part of this root is being taken as a variable and then being passed to this function. This means that anything under channel, well, it'll take whatever's after that slash and it'll pass it to the function. I can do whatever I want with it. So that way I'm not working strictly with the exact page. This is kind of its own type of argument, but uh, people don't really call, that, call it that in web development, I don't think. So yeah, this is just a specific channel page for my messaging system. So I'm going to set up some dummy data here associated with that, well, with some channels. So channels equals C1, hey, hello, and then C2, E, U, ah, uh, so there's some dummy data output equals that for message in channels channel ID. So that's just that argument or, or just typically the page I went to under the channel and then I do output plus equals message plus BR, which is this just HTML for a new line, return the output and it should give us a list of all the messages associated to whatever channel we're visiting. Reset the server and I should be able to do slash channel slash c1 and you can see the messages associated with channel one that i wrote in and channel two and you get that this is just some dummy data later on i'm going to replace this part with mongodb where it's sending stuff to the database and pulling from it anyways now i just want to add some basic navigation so up here i'm going to do output equals that br br channels for channel in channels output plus equals ignore the point href <laughs> slash channels and then the the idea of that channel so just channel and then close that plus channel and close the link actually right here i'm going to do channel or no uh hashtag like discord that's not a hashtag what and I also need a BR back here for the new line. Return the output. And then over here, I want to add a link to the home page. So a href equals slash. And then call it home, a BR, BR. And we should be good. Uh, I forgot a plus here. So if I go back to the channel, it has the link to home. Oops. I am missing a BR. So it's got a list of channels that I've got. What? I shouldn't have an S there. So go back. It's got the list of channels I got. I can go to the. Oh, I, it, it was cached. I just got a list of channels. I can go to them, see the messages. I can go back home, see the other channels, see the list of messages, go back home. That's pretty much just what I wanted to cover in this video. In the next video, I'm going to be covering like HTML and CSS and starting to make things look nice on the website. 
and I'll make a I'll probably make a basic template system. I will not be using Flask's built-in template system because that's a little bit more complicated, and I don't really want to. Uh, go over that at the moment. I might make a video at the end of the series where I go over that and replace everything so I'm doing things properly. But for the time being, I'm just going to show you the bare bones way of doing it by just replacing fields in a string. So yeah, that's it for this video. Hopefully I'll see you guys later.